Yeah. Did that pick up? I think so. I think that made I think that made it out. Hey everybody. How's it going? We're here. We got a little bit more latency than normal because we're on the on the propeller, brother. Oh, propeller. propeller. Spin it up. Spin up the propeller, brother. See, it's great that the video platform is named propeller because you always have to wait for it to spin up. A little bit longer than it seems like it should take. You're like, is it receiving? No. Can I put my hand in it now? Does it does it go? Oh, I have the most important audio device muted, and that's this one. I don't think I have that routed. I don't. I don't, have that routed. I, don't, I, don't. I don't have that routed. Oh, we'll turn it way like. down because it's probably too loud. Welcome everybody. This is the giant. This is the what is it? the the after show. The after the giant with the new old school. Yeah, I don't. I haven't heard that song in so long. I don't. It's. I had it on my desktop at one point. Which, if I had, I could play it. It would. Uh, what do I have? The, you guys are pitiful. Nope, that's Charles Barkley. Uh, uh, did this. This it? Yeah, I think this is the theme music. I can't hear it. Yeah, no, but you can feel it though. You can't hear it, but you can feel it. Welcome to the after this is show. Be the whole show. No, yeah, you got it's, it's you got it. There's a whole thing you can do. Yeah, you know, I wanted to do one more after show. Yeah, we don't have callers. We don't have voicemails, but we have you. Yeah, but, you know, but but people can call that voicemail. That that is your that you're leaving with that voicemail number. So if anyone ever wants to leave a message Don't for tell you, people that. <laughs> <laughs> um, then and so be it. <laughs> um, I was I had I had my email open the other day and I got a voice call. I was like, I'm set to do not disturb. How is this happening? And I kind of wanted to answer it, but I decided not to. Yeah. Uh, I, Cause I've never gotten another, I've never gotten an actual call while I just had well, yeah, Google open. open. Yeah. Um, no, I, my Google voice number, uh, which I should give it out here. Uh, and cause I, I always, um, I, I always want to p pull these and just post them on my Tumblr unedited. And so that's, that's what I've mainly used my Google voice number for. Um, but I need to look it up. It is. Where do I find this? They've, they have redesigned this app since I used it last it is. This is just a shit show. Just a disaster. It's uh settings. Oh, it's probably okay. There we go. It's 707-925-2662. That's uh that's my Two, Google voice number. Say that one more time. 925-2662. I believe Two, it's 925 six, bomb. Nine, okay. I was gonna say, is there any fun words we can yeah. spell out with that? But. I think I think that is I think I think that's how I should have got 925. Jeff or something along. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it's like, hey, call my name, and I'll be there. Spice Girls, a lot of Spice Girls discourse lately, huh? Oh, true. I watched the Great American Bake Off, which is the our answer to the Great British Baking Show, and it is hosted by a Spice Girl. And I was like, oh, that's funny. And then the Spice discourse just blew up. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that happens, but it's a lot. Drink of the spices, Jeff. Rank the spices. Uh, Rank I, them. I, I, I like I like ginger spice, uh, the best. That's I've I've maintained that position uh, all along. But then I would probably say, scary spice, uh, then mm. sporty spice, then baby spice, then posh spice. I think I I think I'm similar with you, except my sporty is my number two. I like I like the sport. I like, yeah, I like that she wears track suits a lot. Yeah, I, I'm a track suit aficionado of sorts, and uh, and mm. I, yeah, that might you might be 
you might actually be right there. Maybe I would swap. Maybe I would swap a two. Yeah, no, it's uh, that's, it's I I I want Abby to get to um, I want to hear what she has to say about. I believe it might have just been a B side. Uh, it's a song called Spice Invaders. And uh, it's a real piece of shit. It's a real bad. It's a. It's a. That's my take on it. That's why I haven't gone to her with this. I don't because I, I don't want to taint. I'm hoping she'll just get to spice. She'll talk about spice invaders naturally someday. I don't want right. to infect it with like me being like, "Hey, this is a terrible fucking song." Um, you know, to to cast that over, to cast that shadow on it. So, uh, but that's that's my hope. Um. Someone, uh, Davo42 says, isn't Ginger Spice a horrible person? I don't know. Maybe they're all horrible people. Who the fuck knows anything about the Spice Girls? When are the, yeah. what, what are the Spice Girls? Oh, I guess they're on a, some cooking show now, apparently. I'm sorry. I have not been keeping up with the discourse. The Spice. Yeah. Um, Who, whomst is the pure Spice. Or whomst the Spice tolls. Or whomst the Spice float. We'll work on this. Next. We'll work. Well, yeah. 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 This is our this is our side project now, is figuring out Spice Girls puns. Um, so how's it feel? This it be embarking on a new mission where you will uh, be uh, where your new job will be working on Spice Girls puns. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. You know, you'd think that uh, magazine writers of the early two thousands would kind of have drained that well. Um, but I think there's a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of pop culture since. So you could be something like uh, Scary Spice. What about Jerry Spice? And it's um, Jerry Maguire. And he's saying, show me the Spice Girls. Uh, you make me want to be a better. Oh, that's, a, that's the wrong movie. Yeah, no. And, and also, like, I think, I, think Jer- I think Ginger Spice's first name is Jerry also. So it's kind of like a confusing mm. sort of. Yeah, okay, that's a bad example. The okay, posh. What's a good one? Posh spice, more like Osh Kosh, Dosh the gosh. spice because she's got so much money, which is sometimes referred to as Dosh in the in the United Kingdom. Yeah, that's one for the people across the pond. That's right. That's um, I'm gonna be fo- mo- mm. I'm gonna be focusing mostly on American puns though. Okay, um, so you want like a bend it like Beckham sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Bend it like Beckham, more like Ben did it like Beckham. Ben did Beckham. it like Beckham. That could be your. You movie. know, Ben had to do it to him like Beckham, like Beck. Bend it like Becker, and then get okay, Ted Danson. yes, to get Ted Danson to show up, and then and, and then like, have him. My best friend's blind. Have him do I don't one know of those like it. back, like bend over backward, like crab soccer, but but weird. Yeah. Not like the the hands behind, but like the all the way, like a, like a bridge. Like a, he's he's doing a, the bridge. Like wrestlers do a bridge. They bend up, up, and then you could be like London Bridge. You know, it all flows together. Yeah, really exactly. Nice. It's like a river of humor. Yeah, and then it comes back to the the black eyed peas, the most American of groups. Mm, B E P do be repping it. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, yes, Apple D app. Because what's more American than appetizers and Applebee's? That's what I, th- I think. I think Apple the app is short for appetizers the Applebee's. <laughs> Being ap- that's like, appetizers that's like a of Applebee's. Bad guy. Uh, Splodge asks, Ben, are you leaving so Jan has to clean the test kitchen by himself when the office opens back up? Uh, yes, you, you got me. That's the reason. Actually, funny enough, so Jan went into the office a little while back to move some stuff around. And I told him to check in on the kitchen. And he's like, I'm pretty sure somebody stole the stand mixer out of here. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, really? And he's like, yeah, because I was looking at it real close one day. And all of a sudden, it was gone. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Okay, keep an eye on it. And like over the course of the week, he said more and more things went missing from that kitchen. So maybe Jan will take it upon himself to get to the bottom of uh, which, who stole the yeah. mixer out of the test kitchen. Who stole the mixer out? Like of all the things. Uh, but and I guess certainly, like, you know, oh, hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Are you oh, about, to, are you oh, about to go? I think Ben is about to go get a stand mixer and, and hold and hold it up. I, it, it, I think we're about to have mystery solved on this. 
Um, but we'll we'll see. I don't have a button for. Toronto! I got I got. I got a I got a good. We started throwing them at his ass for the knowledge. I'm cool, we didn't think anything was going to happen, but it did. I'm, I'm cool, cat bear. I knew it. Found the culprit. Mystery. Hey, mystery solved, everybody. Guess what, everyone? We found. We found him. Uh, ladies. Okay. We got Sorry him. Sorry about that. I just had to move some ladies stuff around. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. We found Wait, the, the we perpetrator found of the. We found the perpetrator of the stand mixer crime. Who? Who did it? Did Jan get to, back to you? You. I just saw. I just saw. I just saw you with that stand mixer. What that? That's my. I bought this. I'm gonna need to see the proverbial. It was on sale. Receipts on sale. How much did it cost? Two, uh, three hundred dollars. Five hundred. Twelve hundred dollars. Wow, that's a real deal. You got a real bargain. That's a that's a that's a sweet bargain you got on that stand mixer. I, I how much? How many things are you stand mixing? You cook at home. I don't. That's I. I my wife is doing a lot of baking, uh, and and that's been great because we, we've had like a lot of like I don't know banana cookies and Ooh. Uh, like banana chocolate chip cookies. And so we also we're buying bananas for the baby, and the baby has gone off of I'm gonna say bananas, but honestly, she is going through a phase of just really not wanting to eat much of fucking anything lately. Boy, that's been interesting as a struggle. <laughs> Uh, get this baby to eat because she needs to, and she does, sure doesn't want to. Um, and so the bananas get to a point where they're like about to go bad, and you're like, "Well, got to bake these into banana cookies or banana bread or some kind of something like that immediately." And so there's been a lot of banana flavored baked good around here lately. That's been pretty great. Yeah, we got a bunch of frozen bananas that we need to to do something with. I just got rid of a bunch of frozen bananas on account of they were they they've been in there way too long. They got under some stuff and then they just get away from you and you look at them and you're like, that's, I don't want them. No, sir. Like, are these bananas okay? They might still be okay, but they sure don't look it. Part ways with a bunch of frozen bananas uh, pretty recently. I, I got a question here from okay. Cam Koenig. Uh, hey, I found an 18 plus theater near me called the Strand Theater that is still open despite the pandemic. What horrors would await me upon my first visit? Just what you know, like people that would go see pornography in public in a public setting, I think is the horror. During a pandemic. Yeah, especially like during a pandemic. Like what you gotta be like porn is everywhere. It's everywhere. And so I you know, the the idea of going to a porn theater and sitting amongst other people watching porn never seemed like a good idea. And you know, hey, some people are into that specifically and like whatever, I don't want to take that away from them. Um, but that always just seemed so crazy to me. The Strand, where, what city is that in? That's, I feel that's, when someone said there was a porn theater named The Strand, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that weird? Uh, no, because that's a great name for a porn theater. It re yeah, it is. Uh, it's like, it was like the wet rope or something, you know? Uh, oh, what? boy. Uh, The Strand. Theater, porno, Kansas City, <laughs> Kansas City. Apparently, ladies and gentlemen, we've got them. Yeah, consider yourself doxxed, motherfucker. That's right, Kansas City, Missouri. That's apparently where the strand is. I maybe Dan mentioned it once. It seems like something mm, Dan yeah, would know about. Sure. It's like it's that. Where he had his. 18th birthday. Yeah, that in the proverbial like strip club in the middle of a cornfield he was always talking about. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Uh, Serious Business asks, would you be hosting Giant Bomb on Mixer if it was still around? I don't know. Like I... Maybe. Uh, the, every time we hosted things on Mixer, there was a, a category of people who complained because the Mixer player was very heavy and uh, was too much for like their laptop or whatever computer they've been on at the time. So there's no one size fits all solution for streaming services. Uh, and, and even fewer now, obviously, but yeah. 
Um, Number of people saying, hey, I'm in Kansas City. <laughs> you should check out The Strand. Yeah, open check out now. The Strand. I hear it's open. Um, Unofficial Jam Bomb meetup. <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. <laughs> things get back to normal, we will not do that. But boy, uh, maybe. Yeah. Um, Reactor says, I work at FedEx today. The porno store got 30 plus boxes of inventory. Business is good. Inventory. Yeah, I mean, porn, it's a great time for porn right now. Is, is it ever a bad up. Is it ever a bad time for porn? I, I would feel like is it a good time for making money in porn? I think that's the the part that always got that got pretty dicey. Always is getting dicier as the internet internet. I guess like that's that's what OnlyFans is for, right? Now it's you can have a direct relationship with the pornographer. And cut out cut all out the, the middlemen. Middle you don't have to go to like an evil angel or whoever these nefarious uh, studios. Don Flamenco. Yeah, yes. Don Flamenco out there in Canoga Park. <laughs> this is where I keep my records. Um, and then you just keep. That's right. Chan knows. Yeah. Oh, hey, my file uploaded. Oh, great. I think that mine probably did too. Jan, if you're watching, the file is in there for Jan, you. I think the file is uploaded. I'm going to click over here and see. Yes, my file has also uploaded. Um, so. I'm a little bummed. So right before uh, quarantine hit, I had pitched you and Brad on a project um, that I was really excited about. Jan and I were in the very initial stages of planning it where we were going to make all... Let me see if I can find the spreadsheet. But we were going to make I was every. Way into the, I was very excited about this idea. Every one of the 150 smoothies in Ring Fit Adventure and drink them all and rank them, and then quarantine hit, and it killed any hope of that. And I'm really sad. That's the one regret I have. That's the single regret. I yeah, have. the only one. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. I, I was as a as a smoothie aficionado. I, I was something of a smoothie lover. I would love to taste test 150 smoothies. I had, um, like, we had ingredients. Like, some of these are weird. Uh, some, some, there's some weird smoothies in there. Oh, yeah. Like the basil vinegar smoothie. The, I, uh, I, I oh, yeah. You, you're not a, an enthusiast of that one. I'm not a, I'm not a vinegar enthusiast. I am, if anything, I am, I am the one. I'm coming for vinegar to slit vinegar's throat if I can, if I can get away with it. I oh the smell of vinegar. I... But there's also stuff in there like French onion soup is considered to be one of the smoothies, and so we were like, I guess I gotta just make some French onion soup. And then uh, just it's what? just cold French onion soup. I guess. <laughs> um. All right. I, I would. I would try it. I would try any of them. Probably. And some of these we'd have to get creative with because like this one just says deep purple smoothie, grapes, black currants. It's like, well, do we add ice cream to that? Like what? Well, I mean, if that's the know. recipe, are these presented in, in Ring Fit as recipes or are they presented as just like loose goofs? I have not. I, I just found my still sealed copy of Ring Fit yesterday <laughs> and was like, fuck. They, um... They'll, you have to get the ingredients and you collect ingredients from the level or buy them from the shop. And it'll be like, combine 2x apple and okay. 2x strawberry for this kind of smoothie, which gives you this buff. Got it. Like plus 10 to arm attacks for the round or whatever. Okay. So what they aren't necessarily game. full smoothie recipes per se. No. It's just kind of an item inventory sort of thing. Okay. I think I'm going to go play some Ring Fit after this. Yeah. Is there more yeah. to play or is there just kind of like you're just revisiting the existing? I'm doing the custom mode. I'm kind of creating my own exercise routines. So I'll have like some general purpose ones, some cardio ones, some muscle targeting ones. Mm -hmm. I've been getting back into it. You know, I it's a big time of change for me and I want that to come. Like, I don't know. I'm, I've never done like, uh, I've always kind of landed in weird jobs i've never really aside actually leaving for giant bomb was one of the first times i was like i am making a conscious decision regarding my career right um because i was like still employed at the time 
but it was at a time of great change where like my house had just burned down and I was already thinking of like, like if I didn't get the giant bomb job, I was, my partner and I were considering just like moving across the country, just like completely starting new somewhere. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of t- doing one of those, like I'm, you know, I turned 30 last year mm-hmm. uh, or I turned 31 last year. Fuck. <laughs> I turned 31 last year. Yeah. Uh, and I figured like, that's a good time to like, there's not much, I mean, people do it in their forties and their fifties, even like, like, you know, my mom was like, check it out. I lost 80 pounds and she's almost 60 now. And I'm like, damn, you can still do like major life changing shit, even as an older person. Yeah. But it's definitely, it gets less easier as time goes on. For sure. Yeah. No, it's the, you know, it's, you get more stuff. I don't know. It's not necessarily true for everybody. You know, it's like like lives lives change, right? I mean, you know, for me, like I've been married almost five years with my wife for seven or whatever it is. So like in that time, the amount of like change my life has gone through is the most it maybe ever has. Um, and like my needs and my interests and all that other stuff, like a lot of stuff has changed about, about me in that time, not just like the circumstances, but you know, like obviously there are parts of it that are just like, okay, well, like I've got a, um, you know, I've got a mouth to feed straight up. If she's not being cooperative all that often with eating, she'll eat honey nut Cheerios. She'll eat some toast. She was big on avocados until very recently. And, and she was like, I don't like avocados. And she's like, man, there's only really one day where it's the right amount of ripeness. Yeah. Too, too early, too late. It's a bummer. Yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yes. So she is starting to understand what a tantrum is and how cool it is to throw them. Um, <laughs> it's really cool. It's really cool. <laughs> oh, so she's getting ready for game of the year next week. Exactly. Yeah. No, she's ready. I'm, I'm actually sitting out. She's going to take my place <laughs> and, uh, and just handle uh, she's going to act on my behalf. I've given her a top 10 list and like argue for this one really hard, but you don't really mean it. Um, and, uh, you know, this one, put this one out there, but if anyone really calls you on it, fold immediately. It's just not worth it. Right. Right. Uh, you know, but then like, but this is to show that you can take an L. And so later when you decide to not take an L, it's exactly. like, well, I took an L on this. That's right. I, I gave you this one. So, uh, you know, uh, but yeah, totally. So it's like, yeah, like, my life change stuff has happened on that end and it's uh it's changed how i think about work and the necessity of work and and like yeah that that idea of just like so you know there was a time there the uh, there was a month or so when i was out of work uh before giant bomb stuff really started to come together and i had that feeling of like i should just moved to new york it seemed like a lot of cool shit was happening in New York. Uh, and there was like a, a scene there and, and all this stuff. I was like, ah, it's a bunch of weird art happening there. And I should just fucking just go. And it just, yeah, I, I never did it. And I don't, I don't regret that. Um, cause it just, it was a ridiculous kind of fleeting thing. Anyway. But yeah, no, I get it. I get that idea of just like, Hey, if I don't land this job, let's just go start over somewhere else. I think that all, I think that all lines up with probably about how I felt at around your age. Yeah. Um, Cause I mean, I've lived in the Bay my whole life. You know, I grew up in the North Bay and yeah, I went yeah, you're, to San Francisco for school and yeah. Like you're, you're from up here. Like that was always funny. Uh, yeah. Like when <laughs> you like were turning, it was like, Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All the same dumb shit that's up here. <laughs> it's only gotten worse around here. I feel like Petaluma especially has really gone to shit. Really, or really gotten nice, depending on your perspective. As someone yes. who is from here, it, basically it, the same thing that happened to Healdsburg happened here, where like it used to be all fucked up and local, and then everyone said like we want to make that wine money, so we're gonna dress it all up and milk tourists. And now downtown is full of a bunch of businesses that I have no desire to ever go to ever again. Right, and I mean rent up there got crazy too. Like just talking to people, like yeah, I mean. The- fucking petaluma rent is like what san francisco rent was a few years ago and yeah but it's weird because i wonder i mean people are starting to leave the bay in exodus um so i wonder if it's going to dip back down and we're going to see a weird resurgence yeah it's definitely like that weird time of like 
uh, you know, as a homeowner, uh, don't want home values to go down. But at the same right. time, I would love it for more people to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's a, there's definitely a, a weird balance to all of that stupid shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me look at the questions yeah, here. Mm. Is there going to be a big Ben blowout last day stream? No, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna do the, uh, game of the year stuff is scheduled. And then I'm going to throw a tantrum at the end when my game doesn't win. Um, uh, unless your game see. wins, I mean. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. maybe your game uh, will just win. I don't. I don't know. It's, that's. I mean, that's a card you could play. <laughs> there, at the at the at the end, like maybe that's the tantrum. Um. Uh. Speaking of porn, who will fill the anime hole at Giant Bomb while you are gone? That is Jan's job. Um, just ask him about Beastars. I've been packing that anime hole full for decades. Yeah, you had a whole ass anime podcast. That's right. And I was, I'm a accredited anime expert. Crunchyroll. You and, did a Crunchyroll. An, an, anime, an anime business brought me to an anime convention to talk about anime. What do you... <laughs> What do you I, even ask? I've never even done that. Yeah, who is Ben Pack? Other than he was in a Crunchy... You were in that Crunchyroll video once, right? For their... I was. I was in a 2000... I don't know, 16 Crunchyroll holiday special skit as an uh, anime businessman. <laughs> okay, well, I guess then you have as much right to the anime <laughs> crown as, as I do or Dan does. So uh, congratulations. Very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. You season a laid back camp started thinking about waiting until April or whenever the season is over and just watching it all at once. I don't know. There, if it's even, I assume it's on Crunchyroll. I don't know. I haven't looked at all. Um, it's been going to stump for Cyberpunk for Game of the Year. The answer is yes, right? I still haven't played it. Um, still. I haven't played it. That's a game that I look forward to trying in two years. <laughs> That'd be an interesting way to check that game out. I wonder, you know, because like by then, like maybe they'll have added more content to it and even done a yeah, multiplayer that's thing. That's what I'm like, hoping. I don't. I just don't know what I don't know what they're gonna do with that thing. It feels like they haven't patched it in a while. Like there for a while, there were like kind of these quickie hot fix patches that were fixing issues and then i think 106 came out or whatever it was and it feels like there hasn't been a patch in a while but i also am not paying as close attention to it anymore uh either so so off on that but i think they finished the part where the saves were getting corrupted if you crafted too many items it's like <laughs> all right man it happens i guess Et with the question i've been wondering what will happen to kingdom heartache <laughs> Uh yeah, I mean that's should we walk through the mind. should we walk should we walk through Kingdom Heartache? <laughs> sure. Tell tell me what you remember about Kingdom Heartache because it's hard for me to remember a lot. So of it. I remember you coming to me very early on in your time here and saying I want to play through Kingdom Hearts for the website. And as I do with most things, if someone comes to me and they're enthusiastic about it, I say sure. Yeah, like that is there's no like big vetting process wrong. Well, I don't know. Let me look at the numbers. How let's, many people let's, let's do with them audience testing. And yeah, yeah. yeah, like, all right. Yeah. If you're if you are legit into that, then go for it. Because uh, I, I legitimately like it was one of those things where if I was a teen with a PS2 at the time, I would have played Kingdom Hearts and loved it. Yeah, uh, like I, I know it's one of those games I could have gotten really into as a youth. Um, and I legitimately wanted to see and I had heard like you know, the gameplay in one is kind of rough, but there's some interesting stuff there. But it was also a time of like, you know, is there an angle we can take to it to make it more than just let's play a game? Right. And so you wanted to have guests uh, initially and have a different guest every time. And I remember there was a while there that there was one guest that you had lined up that kept that like, like, rescheduled a couple of times and it derailed production to an extent that it was like weird. Uh, and then, so I don't, I don't remember if this, so I, here's my question for you is I don't know mm -hmm. if you were ever actually into this idea, but like 
the uh, the thing I wanted to do with Kingdom Heartache was to basically just turn it into an opportunity for me to fuck around and do a bunch of really bad, shitty, long form improv where I yeah. just played a different guest every time. And then I was just on it with you for the whole thing. But then one week I was the janitor. And then the next week I was like a door to door salesman <laughs> or, you know, just like whatever. And then just came up with a cast of characters uh, and then I could just talk shit. And then the joke could be, since I was a different person each time, you could talk about your same three Disneyland things uh, every yeah. episode. And it would be new to me every single time. And I liked the idea. The problem is there had been just been such a weird backlash at that point. Because like, and I don't even blame everyone because, you know, I came into this job with a weird like, a very little on camera experience um and b like you know it took me i didn't feel comfortable even if i could say i'm comfortable now doing this job until like last year mm. cuz like you you it's a weird balance of like you want to be true to yourself but you also want to be entertaining and like there's a weird thing of like i followed giant bomb since the beginning and you guys influenced a lot of my humor um, because it was a very formative point in my life. But then, like, so you start seeing comments of, like, oh, he's just, like, aping this guy's thing. So I'm like, well, I have to break out and kind of make my own voice for myself. But then that's hard because you start reading negative feed. It's all a very complicated thing. And at, at that point, I was just feeling so down on, like, I thought if I left Kingdom Heartache behind, I could kind of start fresh. Yeah. Even though that, like, in retrospect, and, like, we had been, ta we had talked about bringing it back, I don't know, a half dozen times since then. Jan and I yeah. were always trying to, like, find if there's a fun way to reboot it or I whatever. Think the last thing I remember hearing is, or I, the, maybe that was my recommendation, or maybe it was you guys came up with it, but it was, like, you and Jan actually just pre, just get the entire game in the can. <laughs> and then we put it all up at once and go, here you go, here's Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and. Uh, I think it was around the time that we were talking about like, what was it, like the Shenmue endurance run that dropped all at once. Didn't it? We went back and forth on, I, I, I don't remember what we ended up doing with it, but it was like, yeah, there was a while well, there that was like, Oh, just drop the whole thing all at once. Uh, and just Netflix style. And let's see how it does out of curiosity to do like pre-record a bunch of stuff. But it turns out like with the way we, you know, we're pretty day to day. Uh, or if not, I mean, we're pretty week to week, I guess, is, is the actual truth of it. So the idea of like, okay, now sit down and pre-record a bunch of stuff that isn't going to go up for like a month. It's like, okay, so that means nothing is going up because we're recording all that other stuff. It's why the you know, game of the year grew into this like weird mess in a lot of ways, um, of, uh, you know, because it was like, okay, now we've got this hole here because we've got people out here right after Thanksgiving and we're, we're recording as much as possible. And that means there's not that much going up on the site. Uh, just that, that, that push and pull of this thing is actually the, the pendulum, uh, the, the various pendulums that we find ourselves on uh, uh, when it comes to that stuff. I think it's actually the hardest part about this job or, really, yeah. or the thing that we built. So the job, the way it is now. Yeah, you know, it's it's a we it's a it's a weird thing, but it's ultimately I like I don't I'm not going to ever look back and regret my time here or anything. Like I ha even even at the worst even when I was feeling really bad about my output or whatever, like it was still something where like I'm get to, I get to do this podcast. I get to go travel. I get to do all this shit. Like it was still ultimately a really rewarding and fun experience it was just one of those things where it's like it's time it's it's time to go it's it's time to stop yeah i, I think you, you know, know like you yeah you i am i am excited for you i think you've got some ideas about what to do after this and i don't you know talk about that stuff here but uh you know like yeah i think that's uh i think that's cool uh yeah yeah it'll be interesting at the very least and uh that's that's what you can ask for out of life is an interesting one yeah uh, yeah no that, i mean and that drives people you know it's like like a 
a series of interesting problems to solve. You know, that's, I think a lot of people even look at like just work in general that way. It's like, are these problems interesting? To me? That's maybe that's a different way of saying like, am I learning something new uh, at this job or is it, or, or not? Like, I think a lot of people find themselves driven uh, in different ways around that sort of stuff. Uh, Zaki Zaki asks, will Mahjong continue to be part of your mornings? You know, I, I really enjoy Mahjong <laughs> um, in a weird therapeutic way. I, I've also been getting back into chess. So like, yeah, I think I'm, I think my, sh my I mean, my, as far as like short term plans, I'm going to be very busy for some several months, but like on the other side of, of all this stuff I have planned, like I, I, I don't see, I don't see how I can stop playing Mahjong. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I mean, you're a chess master, so, uh, right. you know, that's, uh, how has it been getting back sorry, into chess? Grand, it's grand, grand, sorry, master. Grand, grand master. Uh, how does it feel, you know, pulling the chess pants back on and having to defend that grand masterhood once again? Uh, it's tough, man. You know, it's like, it's one of those, it's one of those things where it's like, you you re you remember yourself as being like good at something, and then you don't do it for a decade, and then you start doing it again, <laughs> and you're like, "Oh right, this is hard," and I didn't really know as much as I think I did even at the time. Um, like I've just been primarily playing against my partner, and it's it's fun, it's it's cool, and we're like pretty well matched. But like sometimes I'm like, "What was I thinking? Why did I do this move? I would have never done this move in my prime." Blah blah blah, and then I'm like. Maybe I would have. Maybe I'm just thinking I'm way better than I was because I was in high school and I thought so high of myself because right. that's what high schoolers do. Yeah, no, you're like, I'm Because I, go I went to one chess tournament. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> huh. Yeah, no, that's... I can't even remember the last time I played chess. Uh, I just, you know, I know, I know how all the pieces move, though I don't understand castling. Castling? That's the name. That's the term, yeah, right? That's the thing. I don't know what en passant does other than that is definitely how it's pronounced. Uh, and I feel like I know children's chess rules of like, horsey go like this. Bishop go like this. Uh, like I can tell you how the pieces move. You can make a pawn go two at the start if you want. Yeah. Like that's my most exciting chess knowledge. So yeah, no, I, I, I don't, when, when y'all were talking about chess more, not that long ago, part of me that was like oh i played some chess i don't i fucking suck i would suck shit at chess and i don't i don't like thinking i have to think so much in so many other things that i don't i don't want my leisure activities to also involve a bunch of thinking so no um so yeah um <laughs> ben are you replacing are you replacing AP mike? mike is maybe yeah. mike leaving I hope not. I don't know. It's well, I, oh, well, man. like is Tom. I haven't listened to the best show in, in, a, in a while. Yeah. Well, he stopped doing it for a while and then recently brought it back maybe a month or two ago. Uh, cause he's been doing double threat with Julie Klausner. Yeah. Which uh, is good. Which yeah. is really fun. It's a very different thing. And it's nice to hear Tom Sharpling in a different setting. Yeah. Uh, I liked the, they put out like three episodes of it for pay. It was like, uh, Mark Marin and Tom Sharpling just shooting the shit for an hour. And they just sold it on the iTunes store. It wasn't even like a podcast thing. And I, Great. I bought all those and listened to it. It's like, yeah, this is good. I'm not like a huge Mark Maron guy, but like in this setting, it's uh, it's really. Yeah, he's a good interviewer. Yeah. Um, but like. Conversationalist. I, yeah. I, I, Tom was in LA for a long time. And so like the calls were still emanating out of Jersey, I think. I'm not really sure how all that <laughs> stuff went. Oh, uh, Chris says uh, that AP Mike is taking time off. Hmm. I take to mean. Getting into some dirt baggy. He's probably listening to the dead a lot. And, oh, 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 gross. Um, there's an episode of Best Show that I really liked. Well, it's, I, so I'm, I'm a, I'm, I like John Daly a lot. I think John Daly is super funny. Yeah. And and so there was an era of Best Show where Tom was just driving around with a really long microphone cable during you know during quarantine and all that stuff and it would just be like he would just pass the bike cable and just like i think sit is i understand it sit in his car and interview people from like 20 feet away <laughs> and i it's it was just a really funny idea and it's just him talking to john daly about stuff and it's just like that was a that was like just a great chunk of audio i thought that was a was pretty awesome john daly's podcast the raffle cast i thought was 
Yeah, that was killer. That's killer. That and Gelmania. That was that was the that and Cyber Thug Radio. Those are the 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 true salad days of of your world. Which you can't really even find anymore. No, as I understand, well, it's, it's not easily things. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I know. Jerry Minor had ideas. I think about going somewhere else and doing something, but then, like, I think all that stuff with the other uh, Miles. What was his name? Uh, the other guy that was like his sidekick. I think he actually did straight up go to jail for a while. I don't think they were necessarily. That was not. That was not a bit. Uh, it's like a like a Crayshon situation. Yeah. Yes. V nasty. Yes, like a like a free V nasty. The podcast version of V nasty. Podca- yes, podcasting's own V nasty. <laughs> exactly what that is. And I hope that, you know, if if, uh, if nothing else that I can be remembered as the little Debbie of podcasting someday, <laughs> I think what she has brought to the microphone is uh, so strong. Um, I have a deep association for that song, that, that Crayshon song and my intro because it was like really blowing up at that moment. And really? I remember me and Matt Kessler talking about how good that song was. <laughs> yeah. So that was a whole moment. Like that, that seemed like that was going to like redirect the course of record labels signing t- tiny white girls to rap. Like that seemed like that was going to happen like in a big way for a while. And that like Kitty pride or the, the Kitty, the former Kitty pride, and all those acts were just going to blow up. And then that Crayshon album came out and no one bought it. And I think the whole thing just like, just vanished. And people were like, what? Nova Rockville? What? No, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, it all, it all just went away. Sad. I, I, I want to be in that world where the Crayshon album, which is fine. Uh, by yeah. the way. That other song, there was another song that was all song, right. The one with uh, two chains on it. That song was yeah. all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's all I remember. <laughs> yeah, there's Cray Sonic. It, it, that album's okay. That album's okay. Um, not deserved to get buried though. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris says Tom is living in LA now, so I don't know. I right out there trying yeah. to trying to drum up more TV work or what? Yeah, maybe. He's I do not dig too deep into what Tom Sharpling is doing in his personal time, but uh, I hope he's doing well. As a as a patron as a patron of his Patreon, I mm. hope I hope that Tom Sharpling is doing well. Um, I just I don't you know I, some of these are I don't know if you know, you know it's like some of these are going to put you on the spot a little bit but uh, you know do you have sure. an all time favorite stream or moment uh, with oh, the site? Boy, it's hard to pick one. I had a lot of fun with some really random ones. Just really stick out in my mind, like playing um bloody spell with you guys yeah. and not knowing what that was and then like getting into that was really fun. Yeah. Uh, I, I keep, I keep going back to that one. Um, doing the Mario stuff was with Dan was really fun be- and building the Mario levels with you guys was really fun. Like, I, honestly, I love Mario. Like it's my all time favorite franchise. And so anytime I got to do that, um, it was, it was really fun. And then the, the, the stuff with Dan and adding like the extra element of like stuff, there are, prizes on the line was was fun and made for some real clutch moments that i'm really proud of um like just trying out weird shit on upf Mm -hmm. i really enjoyed there was a while there where we were like jan and i were trying to cook up segments and stuff all the cooking stuff yeah the cooking stuff was super fun and and i liked almost all of that food like it was like (laughs) yeah this this terrible (laughs) thing that you sold me on is actually not too bad it all had it went way better than it had any right to yeah yeah for sure um the garfield somebody shout out the garfield games yeah going out and getting the fro yeah for you with putting the birthday candles in it yeah that was uh, and like trying to get them to queue up happy birthday and stuff like that was that was a whole i do still have the next game in that lineage uh which may be surprised it is not something that people are going to easily guess uh, but I, it, it now requires so much more weird hardware and um, stuff to do that I just haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. But I, I do, I do have another game. That is in potentially that vein. exciting. Uh, I do have another game in that in that Garfield vein. Uh, I'm looking over at the PlayStation Two over here, which is why I'm looking off to, off to the side. It's like, oh, this PS2 
got some real garbage on it. A um, uh, couple of people asking about my feud with Rory. Um, I gotta say, you know, I hope I'm I hope I'm not gonna embarrass the guy, but uh, Matt Rory is a treasure. Um, as as a human being, like you would be hard pressed to find a more unique guy than Matt Rory, and I really enjoyed being able to work with him and got to go to his wedding this weekend, which was really nice. And I really hope I'm not t- telling tales out of school here, but he did sing the Enterprise song when he was trying to do the mic check. And I laughed so hard and had to explain to my partner why. That's good shit. It's <laughs> good shit. Um, well, we got to wrap it up here. Uh, do you have anything that you want to s- I mean, what you know, you'll be around for a couple of weeks. I mean, we'll have opportunities yeah. to say stuff. You know, obviously, like game of the year stuff will be regimented in a certain way, but you know, um, but you know, we'll be around. Um, so this doesn't necessarily have to be like the final word from Ben Pack uh, or any shit like that. Uh, <coughs> <clears throat> Baba Booey, Baba Booey, Howard Stern's penis. All right, great. Well, on that note, we're gonna wrap up the after show. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't have, I don't have anything else to say. That's, that's the end of the after. I don't have, I don't have music to, I get here. I'll play the, I'll play the music again. Um, I'm not playing it yet. I'll point to you when I'm playing it. So you know, when to, when to dance, hang on, where'd it go? That's, this, uh, this hit Kevin Nash. Uh, no, this is Kevin Nash doing a cameo. Congratulations. That's, that's not it. Audio stick. Uh, this is shortwave radio static. That's not, that's not it. I had it here. I had it here a second ago, but I sorted my file type instead of, uh, what? there, 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 found it. All right. It's, everybody have a great rest of your Tuesday, rest of your week. Going rogue will return. Uh, in the near future and uh and uh it's me your dancing coach yeah and dancing coach ben signing off everybody take care have a great one see you soon i i gotta close that to now i gotta close that to hey we're still going out uh, I gotta, um, mm, um, I gotta go over here. Hang on. I gotta, okay. I gotta go away from this scene. Um, to th- to this one. Okay. Uh, and then I gotta hit this button. Ben, see you soon.